Hello Foundry Church, my name is Brittany Marsh and this is my husband Andrew Marsh and we're going to read week 7, day 6 of Foundry Devotions for the Wait series. So it's Acts 2, 1-41 to in the ESV version. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there was dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parth Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Philgria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They were, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lift up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ears to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and all your sons, your daughters, shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heavens above, and signs on earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, and the sun shall be turned darkness and the moon to blood because the day of the Lord comes the great and magnificent day and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst as yourselves know this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan in the foreknowledge of God you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men God raised him up, loosening the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David said concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced, and my flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the path of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I will say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried in his tomb with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with him an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he first saw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and all of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For God, for David did not ascend into heavens, for he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. But all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort him, saying, Save yourself from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. Do me a favor. Imagine with me a room full of people who are all from different countries. Imagine the people in that room trying to communicate without being able to understand each other. People using hand motions as the volume just gets louder. As people begin to talk, think volume might bring clarity. 
The gestures being used become more animated and gestures are often mean different things in different cultures. So they literally trying to find one basic assumed start point to communicate. It's chaos. Now imagine some of the people in the same room suddenly being filled with the Holy Spirit, which enables them to clearly communicate the mystery of Jesus. A rush of awestruck silence falls as they hear words they understand, but the accent is off. The words are right, but those voices have Jewish or Galilean accents, and they are telling everyone about wonder, the wonders of God and the salvation through Jesus Christ. The Lord wants everyone to know Jesus. God doesn't keep score of where you've been in life. He rejoices when you have heard the gospel, the gospel call and respond. The Holy Spirit came from all came for all who are in Christ. In John 14, 1 through 2 says, In the Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I would go to prepare a place for you. Our response to this promise will tell if the Holy Spirit is within us. We are called to believe the promise of his workings in us even as we wait for his return. Acts 2, 3, uh, 39 through 40 reminds us that when we wait on God, he will help us put our selfish desires to death. How are you waiting on God in your everyday life? I invite you to believe in the salvation and live faithfully in all seasons, waiting, resting, and work. Remember, he's for you. He is not against you. Have a great day, Foundry Church.